uh, dear students you are welcome in this class uh, today uh, we have we are starting the course introduction to the uh, sorry this modern concepts in crop production it is three lecture or three theory plus zero practical there are no practicals in this course so objective of this course must have been told by dr s s rathore to teach the basic concept of soil and crop management along with quantitative agrobiological principles and crop growth analysis so basically the contents of this course are designed for uh, as principles of crop production what are the fundamental principles of crop production only the name has been changed to modern concepts in uh, agronomism this modern concepts in crop production otherwise it is totally the same course principles of crop production so uh, instructors you know dr divakar mahanta ks rana ss rathor rishi raj and myself syllabus allotted to me you by uh, by this time you must have got the course schedule in course schedule the dates are given dates of lectures are given and then your topic and instructor and how many uh, lectures will be covered under one particular topic so i hope you must have got the course schedule we call it course schedule or class schedule where we also declare the dates of tentative dates of quiz midterm and final exam so for me it is uh, scientific principles of crop production what are the fundamental principles of crop production economics of crop production so economics of crop production is very lengthy subject and it also includes your law of diminishing return in crop production crop response production functions other topic is concept of soil plant relations how soil is related to plant what soil is doing to the plants and what plants are giving back to the soil so how they are interacting how soil is interacting with plant and plants are interacting with soil so concept of soil plant relations organic farming and finally the last topic is yield potential of crops and coping systems and their relationship to fertility status of soil this is very very important uh, subject and content and here i want to tell you that if you uh, if you agree if you like i can teach you some extra topics that i teach in some uh, other places or other things like soil organic matter which, which is very very important these days particularly uh, in the era of climate change role of organic matter is increasing what is organic matter how uh, it is uh, made up of and uh, what are the uh, say de how it decomposes what are the factors that affect the decomposition all the major issues uh, i can cover uh, related to organic matter in two lectures so there are many more interesting lectures that are not directly related to this course but i would be very happy to teach you more and more one topic i i would like to teach you that is how to make a good presentation because you will be asked to deliver the seminar seminar you can deliver online or offline whatsoever it is but in your life you must be uh, making some oral presentation before people before your colleagues before your teachers or before the public also so we must know public is speaking i can deliver a lecture on uh this how to uh, give your credit seminar or thesis seminar if you like so those are all extra um, extra classes so it depends upon your interest but i am interested to teach you as much as i can okay so i will discuss this issue later so now references uh, one is uh, i think ready and ready have written wonderful books for co production for agronomy and you must have used these books to qualify for grf exam and other examination they are mostly used by most of the students ready and ready series and some something like that from kalyani publishers so you must be having these books like principles of agronomy principles and practices of agronomy principles of crop production something like that you can have the latest editions of these books because these books cover the things in totality so for example first book is principles of agronomy 
So it is almost uh, same to the principles of crop production. Content wise, these should be the same. Principles and practices of agronomy. Today you will know what are the principles and practices of crop production. The fourth book is by George, Principle of Crop Production, Theory, Techniques, Technology. This is from Pearson. And then number fifth book. This is very good book. Uh, you must be having a course in ISRA for uh, design of experiments or some fundamental course on statistics. Yeah, well. So we continue, we continue this. So uh, number five reference is your Gomez and Gomez. I suggest all the agronomy and, and soil sciences students and every one of you to study this book uh, as much as you can, whenever you require, uh, whenever you require uh, information on statistics or experimental design, uh, you should see this book. This is good book, and I don't know. My screen is shaking. Anyway. Now, uh, for example, if you want to know principles of experimental design, go to this book. If you want to know more on three designs, RBD, split plot design, or strip plot design, or any design, you must see this book. This is good book. And if you want to know uh, the fundamentals of correlation and regression, you should see this book. I have already shared this book. In addition to this, you can have any other book. But this book is very, very important for all of you. Of course, it is uh, written in 1984, but it doesn't matter. Uh, another book is Black Soil Fertility Evaluation and Control. So this book will give you information on agrobiology. So agrobiology, I, I think you will be taught by Dr. Rishi Raj. And you can see a lot of contents related to that portion in this book. And this book is already there with you. Uh, another book is seven number is Havlin, and this is Soil Fertility and Fertilizers, an introduction to nutrient management. All the students of uh, soil science and agronomy should read this book from page one to the last page. Uh, this is excellent book, excellent book. It will give you a lot of knowledge. So kindly read this book from page one to last page. Another book from page one to last page is The Nature and Properties of Soil. These are very important books for uh, all the students. Havlin book and Nature and Properties of Soils. These two books I have already given to you. And their contents are not exactly similar. But suppose if you are reading uh, nitrogen. So in Tisdale book or Havlin book, you will find it in much detail. But in nature and properties of soils, you will find in less detail. And their contents are not common. So that is how you cannot say that these two books have uh, things in common. They do not have. So uh, it is my desire that each one of you should read completely these two books and make small, small notes. So if you start doing it slowly, See, in one day you can read four pages, 10 pages, something like that. And then slowly uh, you will cover these two books. Very, very important books for you. Now we coming to the, uh, this uh, uh, exact uh, subject that is uh, principles of crop production. Principles of crop production, usually uh, we do not know many times if we are asked what do we mean by principles of crop production? We fail to answer. So here you can see there are three words which are making principles of crop production. One is principles, other is crop, and third one is production. So what we can uh, do, we can learn them separately and then we can combine them. So suppose if you combine crop and production, it becomes crop production. If you prefix principles also, then it becomes principles of crop production. Now, let us see what is principle. Many times we say that I am a principled man. Principled man means I follow certain ethics 
I follow certain rules, I follow certain guidelines, then I am man of principles. Similarly, many times you, you can see that people use principles. So fundamental truth or proposition, fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior or for a chain of reasoning. That is your principle. Another definition is the scientific law. The scientific law that explains a natural action means these principles are basically based on certain scientific law that explains a natural action. For example, the principle of cell division. Similarly, the principle of cell division followed a, a, a trend, followed a process, followed a, a certain steps religiously. And uh, you can take one more example. Suppose you throw something, something into the sky, it will fall on the ground. It will fall on, on the ground. So this is the principle that if you throw anything into the sky, it will fall on the ground. But this principle is basically based upon law of uh, gravitation, I think, law of Newton's laws of gravitation. So you can see these uh, principles are basically based upon scientific laws, or they are basically laws. You can call them laws also. A basic idea, principle is a basic idea or rule that explains or controls how something happens or how something works. For example, in agriculture also, suppose you are recommended that you, you go for plowing of the land, land, then you need to explain that you need to uh, explain that soil should have sufficient moisture or soil should not be too dry, soil should not be too wet, then you can go for plowing. So this is a principle, basic or fundamental or general principle, comprehensive and fundamental law. So principle is a comprehensive and fundamental law, doctrine, doctrine, philosophy, or assumption. So you, by now you must be uh, able to understand what is principle. These are fundamental guidelines or rules which, uh, uh, which uh, govern a particular process or thing. Crop, now coming to the crop, in your view, uh, what is a crop? Anybody can tell me the meaning of crop. What is crop? What is meant by crop? Anyway, now uh, you can see what is crop. Because these students should know what is a crop. So a cultivated plant that is grown on a large scale commercially, especially a cereal, fruit, or vegetable. So this is one definition. So no single definition will be complete because crop also applies to animals also. It is not just for plants. Even crop can be seen in birds also, birds and large animals. So uh, it is difficult to uh, explain the word crop in one definition. So normally the meaning of crop is to cut, to cut something, especially a person's hair very short. So cut means cutting is also crop. If you uh, cut the picture, if you cut the hair, then this is, this you call a crop, C-R-O-P, crop the picture, crop the crop, means cut the crop. Uh, it is also harvest. The synonymous of crop is also harvest, means after harvesting of plants, whatever you are getting is harvest. And it is also a crop because in English language, one particular word is used at several places for different meanings because they are short of letters and this language is short of words. So one word you can uh, see many times will have 10, 20 different meanings. So here also they have lim limitation of words. Therefore, sometimes harvest is also equivalent to crop. So harvest plants or their produce is your harvest. 
from a particular area. Hay would have been cropped several times through the summer. So here hay would have been cropped means cut, cut several times through the summer. So now I suggest you to join the link too. I am ending this link here. And for today, you also got uh, link number two that you can join. You know how to go to just you, you can click that, that link number two. So, uh, welcome back. Now you see some more meanings of crop. A crop is a plant or a group of plants grown and harvested for human consumption, animal feed or industrial purposes. So this is somewhat very common or normal definition of a crop uh, that a student should remember in this group. Sometimes you are in big interviews and big places and you are not able to define a crop then you will be in trouble. So these are very simple, simple things, but very important things to learn. What is a crop? You are in MSc agronomy or soil science, so you should be able to answer. So you can say that crop is a, pla uh, is a plant. It can be one plant or a group of plants grown and harvested for human consumption, animal feed or industrial purposes. So this is the definition and you can also say it as uh, crop is a uh, group of uh, economic plants that, that have some value, some value, or uh, crop is a group of plants which have some economic value. You can say in few words, crop is a group of plants which have some economic value. Or you can say that crop is a plant or a group of plants grown and harvested for human consumption animal feed or industrial purposes. Crops can be divided into several categories. I think you know it, food crops, feed crops, oil seed crops, pulses, or ornamental crops, vegetable crops. There are different categories of crops. So far, plants are concerned. Little more on crop. So as I told you that cutting or cropping is also crop. So cutting, moving, grazing, lopping, of branches, lopping of branches means cutting of branches and so on is your crop. So similarly sheep, you know, sheep is an animal which gives you wool. So sheep crop grass closely, means when you put the sheep in the grassland, it will eat the grass or it will cut the grass. So sheep crop, crop here means cut or eat. So sheep crop grass closely, very closely to the ground. So here also you can use the word crop. A head of hair or a mane of a horse is cropped. So you know, horse sometimes have hair on the uh, front part. Uh, somebody's mic is on. Somebody's mic is on. Please put it off. So mane or mane, how to, how to pronounce it? Mane or main? Anybody? Sir, main. Main, okay. Thank you. So main is the hair. Main is the hair that grows from the top of the neck of a horse. It is thicker and coarser than the rest of the horse coat and naturally grows to roughly cover the neck. So neck hair are your main. So this can be cut. This can be cropped. So crop, cropping of your hair is also there. The forester, so crop will have different meaning for different people. So forester may speak of a timber crop. He want wood, so timber crop. It can be, uh, for livestock men, it can be a calf crop. Calf, you know, calf is male young, male young of your cows or buffaloes. So calf crop, crop of the calf. There are many male young of cows or buffalo in a group. That is calf crop or a lamb crop. Lamb, I think it is for your sheep and goat. So young, young male, I think. Is it male, lamb? 
lamb is a male, I think, male uh, or calf, calf of your sheep and goat. So lamb crow. So this is applicable in animals also. The material harvested is referred to as a crop. So it is not just plants growing, they are called crop. But the things that you have harvested is also a crop or harvest. So crop specifies certain kinds of plants that are grown on purpose for a later harvest. Now see crop in birds, the meaning of crop in birds. So you can see this particular hen or any bird you can see. So it has got this, this uh, digestive system or alimentary canal. It starts with esophagus. And then the crop, you can see this, this thick structure. Thick structure, this is called as crop, C-R-O-P crop, crop in birds. And you can see from outside also, certain birds will show you crop. This, this you are seeing in the picture. This is the crop, the swellings, kind of swellings are your crop. This, this is called as crop. So it has some utility for the, for the chicks or young ones. So enlargement of esophagus. You can see it, it is enlargement. It is offshoot of your esophagus. And then it is also called as muscular pouch in bird's neck. You can see it is in the neck part. Above the top of the chest, it is above the chest. It stores, what is the role of crop here? So it stores and produces crop milk. So the milk which is there in the crop, these birds do not have tits or udder like you have in cows and buffalo. So here the milk for the young one will come from this crop. And what is this milk? This is semi-solid material, which is rich in proteins, fats, vitamins, antioxidants, etc. So these birds also give or feed their young one through the crop milk. So here also you can see crop word, crop milk. So what is crop milk? It is secretion from the lining of crop or parents, parent birds that is regurgitated, reg regurgitated to young birds. Very interesting. So this uh, milk, whatever milk or semi-solid is there, is fed to the young birds by the parents. Uh, where it is manufactured, it is manufactured in the crop. So uh, you can see this, uh, and it is also interesting that it, it is not just duty of the female. Uh, the both parent, male and female, both have crop milk. Crop milk, they feed their young ones. However, in case of buffaloes and cows, it is only female which give us milk. But here, both, uh, both parents uh, will have crop milk. And it is necessary also because these birds normally cannot carry much food in their clothes or, or, or in their clothes. They cannot carry much. So this is mechanism made by nature. What is uh, regurgitation? Regurgitation is the expulsion, means giving out expulsion of material from the pharynx or esophagus, just kind of vomiting. It is not exactly vomiting, but they are taking out what is there in the crop, usually characterized by the presence of undigested food or blood. So it is not exactly milk. It can be mix of blood and food, or it can be just uh, food material, semi-solid food materials, or certain secretions, emulsified, kind of emulsified. So this is a crop in birds. Hope you understand this crop in birds. So crop word has some other meanings also. So crop of leaders, it can be used where you have a group of leader. Instead of group of leaders, you can call it crop of leaders. Young crop of scientists. Uh, one more word is there, outcrop. Outcrop means a large mass of rock that stands above the surface of the ground. Large mass of rock that stands above the surface of the ground. So sometimes you, you will find words like crop tree, fruit crop, field crop, vegetable crop. So crop word can be used as a prefix as well as a suffix after certain words. Uh, there is one idiom related to the crop. The cream of the crop. Sometimes this idiom is used by people. 
So here you can see crop word is used in the idiom also. The best of group of similar things or people will be called as the cream of the crop. So finally, uh, crop is a plant or animal product. Crop is a plant or animal product that can be grown and harvested extensively for profit or subsistence. A plant such as grain, vegetable, or fruit grown in large amounts on a farm or the total amount gathered of a such a plant is your crop. Hope you understand. Now come to the field crop. Many times people call field crop. A crop that is grown on a large scale. Remember, field crop means crop that is grown on a large scale in open fields or agricultural land for commercial purposes. So you need to remember this meaning of field crop that is grown on a large scale in open fields uh, uh, or agricultural lands for commercial purposes. If you remember three keywords like large scale, open field, and commercial purpose. Large scale, grown on large scale, grown in open fields for commercial purpose. If you remember these three keywords, then you can easily define field crops. Wheat, rice, maize, sugarcane, many times pulses, oil seeds, they are grown on large scale, they are field crops. So do you have any question up to now? Your questions? Yeah, Dev Malaya, you want to ask anything? No, sir, till now, no. Okay. Any other? So these are very simple things, but uh, we should know, uh, we, should able, we should be able to define these uh, uh, simple terminologies. Now we move to production. So production is simply transformation of input into output. What the simplest definition you can remember, transformation of out input into output is your production. Otherwise, you can define in detail also the action of manufacturing from raw materials. You got certain raw materials or processes of creating. Process, it is also a process. Production is also a process. So processes of creating, growing, or manufacturing goods or products is called production. The action of manufacturing from raw materials, these are your inputs or it is also a process of creating, growing, or manufacturing goods or products is your production. Or you can define it turning raw materials or inputs into finished goods, turning or converting raw materials into or inputs into finished goods or products is a manufacturing process or is production. Or you can simply say creation of something from basic inputs. You are, you are just creating. And you can also see some one more definition of production. The processes and methods used to transform tangible inputs. Tangible inputs means the real inputs that exist and they, they, they are able to be shown, experienced or touched. Tangible input means input that you can touch, that you can feel or that you can see. For example, seed. Seed is a tangible input. You can see the seed, you can touch the seed. So tangible inputs like raw materials, semi-finished goods, and sub-assemblies. These are your, means physical things that you can see. So these are inputs and uh, tangible inputs and intangible inputs. Intangible inputs, you cannot touch them. You cannot see them, you cannot feel them, they are not real, you cannot visualize them, or you cannot miss, uh, uh, they are just uh, untouchable, you can say, they cannot be touched. And intangible inputs, maybe ideas, technology, information, that is your, uh, that is also involved in production process. You see, if you see the definition of law of diminishing return, this lies have some assumption, 
And one assumption is that there is no change in technology. You will see it later. So technology is also a, a resource input in the production process, even information or ideas, but they are soft things. They cannot be seen, they cannot be touched. So these are intangible inputs. So uh, into goods or services. So now I read the process, processes and methods used to transform tangible inputs and intangible inputs. Tangible and intangible inputs into goods or services is your production. Now, if you combine these two, it becomes your crop production. So what is crop production? A branch of agriculture that deals with growing crops for use as food fiber or other purposes. This is one definition of crop production. Otherwise, crop production is cultivation of plants. So process of cultivating plants for the purpose of producing food, fiber, fuel, or other products. It involves activities like selection of crop varieties, seed, land preparation, planting, sowing, irrigation, fertilization, management of insect pest diseases, and harvesting. There are different processes in the production. In addition to on-farm activities, you have seen what are the activities starting from seed selection, variety selection, uh, field preparation, your lab, land leveling, sowing, uh, irrigation, weed management, etc. Crop production also involves post-harvest handling. It means it is not up to threshing. Beyond threshing also, certain operations are done beyond the th harvesting. Those are also part of the crop production, like your post-harvest handling, storage, processing, transportation, marketing of agricultural products. These are also part of the crop production. You cannot separate them. These activities are important for ensuring the profit, quality, and safety of food and other agricultural products. So the aim of crop production is to get the profit out of uh, production, get the quality products, and get the safer food, get the safer environment, and do not disturb the natural resources. Do not over exploit or exploit the natural resources. Improve the health of the natural resources. These are the aim of crop production. These are part of crop production, or you can call it sustainable crop production. We want crop production, but it has to be sustainable. We want sustainable crop production. So it thus involves agricultural practices, this crop production, and systems concerning crop yield, profit, environment, and ecological consequences with the goal of identifying best practices or sustainable practices to produce more with less. Means here, you need to improve the resource use efficiency in crop production. If you improve the resource use efficiency, automatically the pollution will, will be reduced. Pollution through agriculture will reduce and the cost of cultivation will also reduce and your profit or margin from the production, crop production will improve. Efficient and sustainable production practices are necessary for meeting the in, increasing increased demand of food and other agricultural products. So therefore, there are certain modifications in agricultural practices. The way we produce the crop, there are 100 different kinds of versions of crop production. Somebody likes to go for integrated farming system. Somebody like organic farming. Somebody prefers integrated crop management. Even somebody continues with the traditional farming, conventional farming, that is chemical farming. There are very different, many different kinds of versions of crop production. Uh, like conservation agriculture, or somebody is following good agricultural practices, etc. So understanding the principles of crop production, I will continue this uh, subject tomorrow, from here onward. Now, if you have any question, you can ask, uh, do you have any class uh, after 10-15? Uh, are you free uh, uh, now, or you have any other class? So we have a class you scheduled a class. at 10.20. Okay, so no problem. In the meantime, if you have any question on uh, uh, this subject, uh, then 
suppose i want to ask you that uh, uh, by now you should be ha having some idea about what are principles what is meant by crop what is production these are very simple things but you should remember these things so you have seen that uh, principles of crop production are required we need to know the best practices so we start with the crop variety selection of the crop varieties seed selection then field preparation planting and all the steps in production are there so every step has a has certain principles every step have certain principles like selection of seed so what guidelines should be there in the selection of the seed what fundamentals rule should be applicable to the selection of seed that will be principles of seed selection or or, or simply principles of crop production because it is one component next component can be crop rotation what crop rotation should be followed on the farm so what should be the principles of crop rotation i think you understand next would be your say uh, water management water management is also part of the crop production you cannot keep it separate so what are the principles of water management because water can come from rainfall water can come from your irrigation or some snowfall or some other sources can be there for water so what are the principles that will govern the the water management water management also includes your your conservation of water into the soil you can apply water how to produce more with less water efficiency efficiency so certain principles are related to efficient water use so similarly for all these inputs all these activities all these practices in crop production we have principles we have principles that is why any book any fundamental book in agronomy you will find title principles of agronomy principles of crop production so all these books contain chapters on seed chapters on machines or tillage chapters on water management chapter on nutrient management or fertilizer management chapters on cropping system or rotations chapters on harvesting and so on so therefore all these contents are mentioned under the heading principles of crop production or principles of agronomy here in this case agronomy principles of agronomy is taken as equivalent to crop production because agronomy is directly crop production and soil management soil management is necessary for crop production so you can take these two words equivalent agronomy and crop production any question from you if not we meet tomorrow and you can come prepared with your questions for now it is bye thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir